Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington and I'm here with Sabrina Risley, founder and CEO of Certus Professional Network, Denver's longest standing grassroots professional networking community. And she's managing partner for the Alternative Board, the premier provider of peer advisory boards and business coaching worldwide. She's also a personal mentor, one of the women who coached me in the development of the Women of Denver program. Sabrina, what an honor to have you here today. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to have you. So where I wanna to start today, so this is my favorite story. From the very first time I met you, I went to one of your Certus events, you invited me, we were introduced by a friend, Daphna, and um, you took a picture with me, and it was on my Facebook page, and I had tons of people asking me, how do you know Sabrina Risley? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay. you just moved here. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know that. <laughs> it was as if I was a celebrity because I took a photo with you. So that means you have built an incredible brand. I want to know how you were able to build that. What did you do to make such a reputation in this city? Um, well, I've been at it for 13 years, so I would say consistency and just maintaining it and um, just over the years and as well as consistent action, consistent message, consistent personality, mm -hmm. consistent product, service, I guess. That's perfect, yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, consistency builds that trust, people start knowing you're always there, probably everywhere. You're one of those people that your face is all over the place, so that's, that's pretty awesome. That's great advice for everybody <laughs> that wants to build that brand. <laughs> Good. And then when I visited the Certus event, um, one of the things that I that really stuck out with me is the fact that besides also having a, a great brand yourself, you have really branded that community. When I went there, and I traditionally don't like networking, I feel very uncomfortable with it. Um, I'm a total introvert, shy individual, and you wouldn't think so, right? <laughs> um, but they embraced me. So it was actually hard to get people to talk about themselves because they were just swarming around me asking me about me. What did you do to build such a strong community foundation? Um, again, it, I mean, it was, it's been a consistent message since 2005 or so, mm -hmm. but in 2010, I discovered The Go-Giver book mm -hmm. by Bob Berg, and he's been a mentor to me, uh, and we embraced that philosophy in 2010, and it's what we'd been doing prior to that, but that book defined, ooh, this is what we do. And um, so all of our events, we uh, try to instill that philosophy in what, how we teach people how to network, in how we deliver uh, the networking event, the structure to the event, and our blog articles are around that. Um, so it's gotten to the point where it's not me teaching, uh -huh. it's our event hosts teaching as well. Then our members have picked that up. We've spoon fed you know, the folks who come and network with us. So it hasn't been come to an all day seminar and learn to be a go-giver and learn to network. Yes. It's been over time and folks, uh, the average person stays with us for four years. So they've just over time adopted it until it's their own. Okay. And um, you know, our philosophy is if enough people ask how I can help you, you will eventually be asked as well. You know, if I ask enough people how I can help them, yeah. they're gonna ask me back. I love that philosophy. Uh, yeah. And so it sounds like you created a system around that philosophy and that system continues to feed the education throughout everything that you do. Yeah, it supports the message. Ab oh, yeah. that's amazing, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, but I do wanna say, Certus, I, I have, tended to be the brand of Certus, uh -huh. but I don't want, it's not about me. Yeah. And um, I think we're less that way now. Yeah. It's more Certus stands on its own. It does, and it I'm stands removed. on its own. Yeah. And your brand is that you are this mentor, you are this powerhouse branded um, socialite, but at the same time, it's that you are the CEO of this program that people really look towards. Yeah, well, and I mean, I felt success mm -hmm. happened when the company and our events could happen mm -hmm. without 
without me you being there. Being there. Yeah. And the energy was still present. And the product, you know, people were still productive and they were still networking effectively yeah. and things were happening. For That's them. real success. Yeah, I don't want it to be me. I want it to be what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I watched your TED talk, oh. your TEDx talk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And you talked a lot about us. You, you told your story mm -hmm. of, I think it was you. You, you were um, you had decided you, you had kids. You had decided that you wanted to to, to make a change. And I'm probably getting it. I'm going to get a few things wrong. And then you 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 were laid off. You had eight and a half months severance, and you were like, "This is it. This yeah, is my it's moment." My chance. Yeah. yeah. So tell yeah. us a little bit about that story. I mean, it's a credible story of you know kind of saying I'm going to do something different and I'm gonna find it. And you had a really unique first business. Yeah, I did. You know, I don't talk a lot about it. People ask me, how did you even get into this? Mm -hmm. And it was really by chance. Um, I did have another business. When I, I started my company September 22nd of 2003, but who's counting? And then um, I was laid off two weeks later with eight and a half months severance. And I told myself when I started my company that I was going to resign, watch their watching right now, sorry, <laughs> I, it was in the plan, um, that I would resign by the end of the year, so three months later. I don't know that I would have done it because, you know, it's hard to take a risk and I had been there for nine years. Um, so I started my company, which was filming a um, family's childbirth experience. Mm -hmm. So I had my own C-sections filmed. And when I had a friend who was having um, triplets and it was gonna be a C-section, she was afraid. And so I said, well, I have mine on video if you'd like to watch my mine. And she wanted to, and then she wanted hers filmed. So I filmed it for her and I was in there with her and filmed it for the family and then created a little movie, a, you know, your own baby story. And she said, oh my gosh, you need to do this for a living. People yeah. would so buy this. I know a lot of people, a lot of mothers of multiples and families of multiples that would want this. And um, so my TED talk was a lot about, the TEDx talk was a lot about not doing what you're told, doing your own thing. Yeah. That business I started because someone told me to do it. And um, so it's not necessarily, it, it wasn't a passion of mine. I did love delivering the product, mm -hmm. but editing movies was not my thing. And I am, like I made probably five cents an hour because yeah. I was so, <laughs> it had to be this just series. so, and they were an hour long. <laughs> and so I had to sit there and watch the whole thing. And if I saw one little thing, mm. I would had to edit it, it would take overnight to, you know, I'm not going to get it. Yeah. Oh, and, um, and then I have to watch it again. So cameraman probably gets, yes. <laughs> I'm looking at him, like, or knows. whoever's <laughs> editing things. Um, so, but all along the way I was networking and, uh, me and, and some of my power partners, referral partners, we're traveling all over town, networking on a Sunday at, at someone's home, 50 miles away. And we're like, oh my goodness, we've got to be able to do this yes. somewhere at a daytime and place that's more convenient for us. And they're like, great, Sabrina, you're organized. Why don't you plan it? And so that's kind of how it started. And um, my degree is in psychology. Oh. So uh, human behavior fascinates me and what motivates people and rapport building and relationship building and things like that. So I, you know, one event turned into two, turned into five, turned into 11 that we have now. And um, in 06 or 07 is when I decided to kind of figure out how to monetize my passion uh -huh. and um, let go of the editing and um, figure out how to make this work, Certus work. And I had no idea it would turn into what it is, mm -hmm. um, but it morphed over time and based on what the community wanted. Yeah, wasn't I my like idea. That. I mean, meaning. It just, I, I get that. It's right? so important to go with what your community is asking for versus trying to do what you think they want mm -hmm. because they're never people aren't going to buy what you think they want. They you you evolve things based on what they're asking for mm -hmm. and then the community really builds and it builds it yeah. builds fast. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a strong enough opinion about networking for me to, you know, say this is how it's going to be. Yeah. Um, but I just observed what what works why are some people mag so magnetic and people are drawn to them? Mm -hmm. And that's how I found Bob Berg. And actually someone told me about the book and said, 
you need to read this book. This is what you do. And that was um, just an eye opener, that book, The Go-Giver. Uh, and then talking to Bob about it. You know, one of the great lessons I learned from Bob is that people don't value that which is free. Mm. Uh, because this gentleman who told me about the book said, you know, yeah, I, you ought to just call Bob. I bet he'll give you cases of books for free. And you can give them out to all your members as they join. Yeah. And he goes, just message him on Facebook. I'm like, oh, okay. So I did. And boy, did I get a lesson back. <laughs> and that's how we became friends. He's like, Sabrina, you know, have you read the book? <laughs> um, people don't value that which is free. Okay. So he said, yeah. I'll give it to you at cost, but I encourage you to charge everyone full price okay. for the book. That was so, definitely a lesson. Yeah. yeah. So was he your first mentor, one of your first big mentors? Absolutely. I mean, there's many along the way, but in this business, absolutely. And I, I still turn to him and read his blogs and um, read his books, Go Giver, Sell More. I love even more than The Go Giver. So The Go Giver is a parable and Go Giver, Sell More uh, goes into more it's more, a little bit more of a textbook, but with great examples. It does reference the first book, but yeah. it's a standalone book on its own. And I recommend The Go-Giver Sell More um, first. I, it's a great book. Good, okay. And Bob's a great man. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you seem like a natural mentor. And so how does that evolve into where you are today, the mentorship that you were already giving to people such as myself and to you know, the, the formal mentorship that you're doing now. Yeah. Well, and with TAB, you know, I got, I got into the alternative board as a way to add more to the community and give more back and um, just be able to focus a little bit more on actually helping people. Mm -hmm. You know, coming to network is all about what you put into it, the networker, and um, the, our hosts and myself, we can only do so much, but it's really, we try to teach them to network. It's up to them to make it happen, mm -hmm. so to speak. And we set up a foundation and an environment for them to do that. Uh, with the alternative board and being able to coach and facilitate board meetings for CEOs and presidents of smaller companies, um, I, you know, to, to be able to ask the right questions and get them to come up with their path mm -hmm. and what they need to do or to bring presidents together to help one another as peers is has been very rewarding yeah. and um, you just see the light bulbs go off and it's now I get to help the folks who come and network with us in a different way too um, just through the experience with TAB mm -hmm. yeah so what would you say is and this is a big question you can tell me oh crystal that's too big but you, you have all these things that you've done and you've had a lot of people that you have touched through your networking, through the mentoring that you've done. What would you say is your deepest passion within that? So where do you find yourself the most within it? Where do you feel at home with all of the things that you've been doing? What calls to you the most, I guess, is what I'm asking. <sighs> you know, I would have to say, making people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Networking is scary to some. It was scary to me. You know, I had, ex had an experience um, at a women's networking event. Uh, I shared the story earlier with some of the gals in the audience um, where I went to this event thinking, awesome, this is my target market. Yeah. And they're all gonna wanna know what I'm, what I'm up to because they're at this networking event. And um, it was early in my career with Certus. Um, and not, I really couldn't break into one conversation. Mm -hmm. I wasn't introduced around. Um, I wasn't asked about myself or what I do or, um, it was a group that got together monthly and they were very excited to see one another. Oh, okay. And the new person kind of, you know, I don't know. So maybe I could have approached it differently, but I walked away that day not feeling great about myself, yeah. not enjoying the experience. And I wanted to make sure no one came to a Certus event feeling that way. And I wanted to make sure they felt like we added something to their day, no matter how small or how big. And um, so that's kind of, things started changing in Certus. So we are a little more intentional about how we help people network. Yeah. And um, so I think just making people feel at ease, because I'm not, 
I still, to this day, will walk into a networking event. If it's not my own, I feel a little out of place. I'm the same right? way. <laughs> Even though I know how to do this. And <laughs> so really, I remind myself, what is it that I teach other people to do? Yeah. And it's really just go in and make friends. Just have a conversation and get to know people. Mm -hmm. And you go in with a few basic skills, like rapport building, asking great questions, getting to know other people, and ask how you can help them. And eventually, it comes back around to you. Yeah, I love, yeah. love, love your philosophy. And I take the same thing. I mean, I'm, like I said in the beginning, I, I feel awkward, absolutely awkward when I go to networking. And I'll likely, you know, I'll want to bring myself towards the wall and I have to force myself to go to the middle. And so I have these mental strategies that I've already prepared, like, okay, find somewhere in the middle, place yourself there, and that way people might see you <laughs> and talk, and, and it's all mechanical in my mind. But when I'm at my own yeah. place and my own networking events, I'm at home. And you have something to do. Yes, Run I have show. a role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a very, very yeah. different experience. Yeah. So yeah. I love the fact that you have created that. It's a, it's a home space for people where they can feel comfortable, and you've taken into account how people naturally think and feel when they're in a space full of strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and... You know, we have so many frequent and repeat networkers. Mm -hmm. They know maybe half the room or 30% of the room, they want to meet the new person. Oh, that's so, why they all crowded around me. <laughs> they're like, who's this gorgeous new person? No. She's so magnetic, <laughs> and she is. Um, but yeah, I, they want to meet the new person. Yeah. So whereas, and there's different groups have different purposes. So find, you know, I encourage people, professionals, to find the group that is serves your personality, your purpose, and your passion. And, um, you know, when we go to, to find a group that's right for us, you have to shop. You have to shop around, and I say give it three tries maybe because maybe the group was off that day the first yes. time you visited, but give yeah. it three tries or at least twice and take a friend, you know, and a wing woman, <laughs> a wing person. Take, take someone with you, and um, it's always easier to go into a room full of strangers with a friend. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So is there any um, word of wisdom or final lesson you'd like to leave the audience today? Wow. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I would say a couple of things. Not a fi one final thing, so a few. Um, have your the, like 30 second commercial down. Because people will ask you, so what do you do? Yes. So have that down. And, um, and be very concise and brief and, um, and keep it simple and talk about benefits, not features. Yes. So talk about how you help people. And, um, and if, if you've had a long enough conversation, don't feel bad about asking for help. Asking, you know, I'm looking to meet these types of people and hopefully you're talking about power partners and referral partners as opposed to what your ideal client looks like. Okay. Because my biggest number one networking tip is know your power partner and ask for introductions to your power partner. So those are complementary businesses? Mm -hmm. that yeah, could so yeah, for example, a chiropractor and a massage therapist might go hand in hand very ah, well okay, together. That makes a lot of sense. So that, you know, a chiropractor might refer to the massage therapist and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So rather than me asking for, as a chiropractor, people who have achy backs, well, I don't know anyone with an achy back, but I do know a massage therapist. Okay. So um, people tend to know others in professions as yes. opposed to someone needing the service. Yes. And then you partner up with that one power partner, that referral partner, and they're kind of your external sales force. Good one. Yeah. 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 So that's it. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate all the wisdom that you've shared to me personally and to our audience here today. Thank you so much. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and my guest, Sabrina Risley. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.